Hello, welcome to Plathville Friends. I'm glad you found my channel. Please subscribe and let's jump in. Okay, today's episode is titled, If I Lose My Honor, I Lose Myself. All right, so it really kind of starts off very slow. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but in terms of commentary, there wasn't a whole lot to say. I kept thinking like, this is going to be a one page review. It's going to last about five minutes. Uh, but there was more content that came up as, as the episode went on. So they start off in Malibu and we, we're seeing the guys together. They're going surfing in the morning. Nothing really remarkable to comment on there, except for the fact that Ethan said this whole trip, the whole purpose behind it is to forget all his problems which never works, Ethan. One of these days you're gonna learn that. This is the first time that I realized Ethan is not very adventurous because we see Micah doing so many different things. And we've seen Ethan kind of like, wasn't he like um, boogie boarding in the ocean in Florida along this? I mean, it seems like they were a little bit more adventurous then, but I don't know. Maybe Ethan just doesn't like the cold, which doesn't make sense because he loves Minnesota. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, but eventually, Micah coaxes him to get into the ocean. It seems like they had a good time. Barry does a little reflecting on his life and how it's difficult and um, it's hard to get through, but he knows there's a light at the end of the tunnel and on the other side of this, he's gonna be okay. So that was nice. In the commentary that Ethan does, he's talking about how he's in his head trying to figure out how to make this marriage relationship work. He is clearly still deeply in love with Olivia, but he's struggling with um, how she's changed in terms of her morals, values, and fundamental beliefs in life and how different they are from him. And, and thus, as a married couple, they're struggling on how can we be so different, but then bring children into the world. It's just going to be chaos because we're going to be arguing all the time on how to raise them, which is true. I was wondering if when he went to California, he partly did it to figure out a way to break up with Olivia or say goodbye or come to terms with it based on his own values and beliefs and the fact that he does still love her. But uh, listening to his talking head, it doesn't sound that way at all. We cut to Nashville where Lydia has taken all the little girls for a road trip. So that was cute, but that's many hours away. And so it looked like from all the snapshots they took in that and the montage that they did, that the girls all had a really great time. And the main reason they went there was for Lydia to record her album. I generally don't like talking about kids on this channel, but Lydia is an adult now. Um, Sometimes audio doesn't come through really well on the television either. We have heard Lydia singing in the past on her own, you know, like acoustic by herself. You know, not the best. <laughs> Little pitchy. Um, so when she said she's been working on writing songs, which I thought was nice, and she was going there to record an album, <laughs> I just thought, well, you know what? Kudos, Lydia. Kudos for cashing in on the television TLC series. Um, and, and people will buy it because they watch the show. You could hear her recording. Actually, it didn't sound bad. It was just a nice person singing a song. So I don't know how many records it's going to sell, but hopefully a ton. And I hope that she can cash in on this opportunity. Then we cut to Mariah, who's down in Tampa, Florida, where she lives, and she's on her way to the recording studio. Um, she has been making music for a long time. So she's back in the studio, and apparently she also has some meetings with people in California regarding her music as well. So I don't know if it's the record label that she's signed under, or if it's branding deals, or what. Um, but that's what is eventually going to get her out to California. Uh, for her music, or so they say. I mean, I mean, it's really convenient that those meetings all fell when the guys were all there, but we'll see. She talks about the song that she's going to record in the studio, and she says she's written many songs, and this one song in particular she wrote from a very painful place to help her work through things, and it was the one song she never, ever, ever planned on actually producing. But isn't that what all musicians always say? 
that it's it's the song that comes from the deepest hurt in your soul that ends up being the one that resonates with people the most. It ends up being the one that really is the best because it's written from a place that is raw and real and relatable. So the song essentially is about her relationship with Olivia and how that relationship really pulled her away from everything that she held value in. She saw the excitement of hanging out with Olivia who was like anti everything <laughs> that both of their families stood for. And to Mariah at the time, it kind of felt like freedom and hanging out with, with Olivia was fun, but she realized um, over the couple of years that they hung out that it wasn't fulfilling, essentially. I'm putting some of these words into her mouth. This is, this is my interpretation of what all went down and what the song is about. So Mariah is at a point in her life where she wants to get back to that. And we saw that a few episodes ago with the baptism. I like what she said. I wrote down what she said here. She said, everything I said I would never go back to, I have gone back to, but in a whole different light. That, that last part, I think, is the most important part. It's not like she's returning exactly back to the same Mariah that she was before or the same circumstances that she was before. She's moving forward with all the tattoos. She's moving forward, but she's going back to her core values and beliefs that she strayed from during her Olivia phase, which is interesting because Olivia's husband, Ethan, is sticking true to his course and values, even though Olivia has gone astray. She pulled Mariah with her, but not her own husband, Ethan. And I've always given Mariah so much credit for being so strong, and she is. And I'm constantly critiquing Ethan for being so weak and um, spineless when it comes to communication and talking with people and working through problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we see in this episode, and the ones actually kind of leading up to it, that he's actually the stronger one in terms of sticking to values, beliefs, morals, etc. So they show Mariah recording in the studio. I have to say the song is beautiful. Maybe it's just my kind of music. I don't know. But she sounded beautiful on it. She really does have a unique and very beautiful voice. We went to the fairground and got on this merry-go-round. Four years later, I said, I'm getting down. He said, how could you? she's a poet they they're good they're good I'm not gonna say it's the best song out there in the whole world but it's a good song it's a song I would download and listen to it opens up with beautiful strings and some piano accompaniment and then it goes in it's it's um soft and beautiful and poignant it's nice she does say at the end that the song is about Olivia and her constant negativity Ooh. okay Alrighty then. I do love though that the song is not intended to be a bashing song of Olivia. It's about Mariah and Mariah's journey. And she says, and I wrote this down because I thought it was great. She said in terms of her straying, her cutting ties with family, her rebelling, etc., etc., uh, Mariah says, I am taking responsibility. I am not mad at Olivia anymore. I love her. There's no bad blood or bad feelings. Sometimes you just got to let people go. That's what I loved at the very end is that it's, it's not like I've forgiven her, but I also understand we need to just go our separate ways at this point. And that happens with some people in life, right? It's time to move on. So... There are times people do you wrong and you can forgive them, but you realize it's never going to be what it once was. And that's okay because life goes on and we meet new people and, you know, we can't keep going back and living in the past. It's nice. This was a nice part of the episode. She does mention that she wants to show Ethan the song before she releases it. And she says, I think Ethan's going to understand. You think... I don't think so, Mariah. 
unless he's literally at the point of divorce at that point, like signing the papers in divorce, I don't think he's going to understand. He's not understanding any of your actions as they relate to Olivia. He is in Olivia's world. He's still completely smitten and in love with Olivia. So I don't think that would go over well if she played the song for him, but we'll see. Maybe they'll show that in future episodes. We cut to Ken's house in Florida. Um, I was going to look it up online. It said he lives in Crawfordville, Florida. Boy, that sounds like a small town, doesn't it? Crawfordville, Crawfordville, Florida. Um, and I'm assuming that I never looked this up either, but Cairo must be really close to the border of Georgia. And then I'm guessing Crawfordville is near the northern part of Georgia. So that, or near the northern, excuse me, near the northern part of Florida so that they don't have that far of a distance to drive because Ken works with Isaac on airplanes together and it never seemed like they were driving vast differences to see each other. But I just thought it was interesting that they lived in two different states. So Ken has a really nice log cabin home. I love it. I, I like that it's open and spacious on the inside. A lot, a lot of raw, of wood. I don't want to say raw wood, but a lot of wood. All the cabinets are, everything's wood, wood, wood inside. I mean, it's a log cabin. It's apropos for a log cabin. I don't know that I'd want that much wood, wood every day in my life surrounding me. Wood floors, wood paneling, wood cupboards, wood... But it's cute. It's like a log cabin house. It's logs, wood, logs on the outside as well. Um, I gotta say I like it. The, I think um, TLC was trying to do a little bit of a, a dig at him by zooming in on his Hummel collection, which kind of dates him a little bit. I don't know. Are Hummels still collectible? Let me know if Hummels are collectible because I do have some Hummels. I have Hummels that I have inherited from my grandmother. But um, Ken has a lot. Ken has a lot of Hummels. Maybe I can sell mine to Ken. <laughs> so we have a little peek into Kim and Ken's relationship. And I will say this is the first time I felt myself come around a little bit in terms of their relationship. Kim did have a point... Um, in her talking head at one time when she said, Lydia and Mariah think I'm moving too fast with Ken, but they're young. If they moved at my speed, it would be fast, but I'm in my fifties. She's got a point. She's got a point. I mean, it's not like she's in her seventies. So that would be a little bit different, but I, the problem is she's still married. She's not divorced yet. That's the problem. I mean, if they can speed up this whole divorce proceedings, that's fine. But in terms of just moving on, I understand that, you know, you don't spend the same number of years getting to know somebody as you would if you were in your 20s. I'm not 20 anymore. We find out a little bit more about Ken and Kim here. Ken has daughters of his own, so he also has children and can relate to Kim having children. Um, Kim said that she lived on a, was it a sailboat? It was a sailboat, but she lived in a marina on a boat for the first four years of her life. So she's very comfortable on water. I guess they were going to go canoeing later on. And she said that she loves the water and she feels very comfortable on it because she spent four years. Back in Los Angeles, we have Barry and Ethan sitting down on the couch to have a conversation. An hour's conversation with Ethan is probably about 50 minutes of silence and 10 minutes of words. He doesn't say much. He's not a great communicator. And in this conversation, he admits he's not a great communicator. And they talk about Barry says he's not a great, Barry's come a long way. He's pretty good now about expressing himself and prying information out of the kids. This, this divorce has done well for Barry in terms of just his overall social interactions with people and whatnot. So Barry claims it he can relate to Ethan because he was who Ethan is now and that is not very good at sharing feelings. Ethan, of course, does not share anything that's going on with his relationship with Olivia. Are we surprised? The only thing he really says to his father is, well, I know you've been through a lot lately and um, I am going through different periods of, um, de he called them depressing situations. I don't know if he's clinically depressed or if he's just really down and sad. But at any rate, Ethan wanted to know how to handle this. 
And he says the reasons why he's having these uh, depressing situations is because he's working through stuff with Olivia. So he said nothing. He's been working through stuff with Olivia since before they were married. And then we get a little glimpse into Ethan's head with him giving us an explanation of why he's not sharing everything. I don't really want to spill everything that's going on because I haven't really made sense of all of it just because I don't truly know definitively what the end outcome is of everything that's going on right now. It's just a big mess. Ethan, that's what talking with friends and family is for, to help you work through things, to talk it out. I guess he, he's never had that situation where you feel one way and you start talking to somebody about it. And then as you're talking about it, like revelations come to your head. That happens to me often, actually. And I think because he's not a talker, he doesn't even know that that's a possibility. But he's claiming he's not sharing anything with everybody because he hasn't worked it all out yet. This is probably why he has such a problem communicating with Olivia, too. If he's having issues and conflicts in his head, instead of talking to her about it and trying to work through them, or at least letting her know, this is what I'm thinking about right now, waiting until he's completely resolved it on his own, not a good strategy. It's not going to serve you well, Ethan. Let's go to plan B. Let's talk to people. That's a good idea. We then cut to Olivia, who is in Florence, Italy, to visit with friends. Again, she was just out of the country visiting friends. What I think it was two episodes ago. I haven't taken the time to go back and look at it. But she wasn't around for a period of time because she was on vacation with friends in some foreign country. She's gone again. I, amazing. I don't know where they get all their money from. I guess it's just TLC. But, I, you know, I guess good for her. I mean, I know she's a wedding photographer, but... She doesn't seem to be gone every weekend. It only seems like there's a couple times an episode that she's not around. So I don't think she's a prolific wedding photographer. I'm not going to demean her and say that it's just a hobby, but I am going to say that it's part time and certainly not something that she's going to sustain her life on. So, so I guess it's TLC money, I guess. I don't know. Kudos to her too. Get your bag, girl. She said she's not only there to, um, this was funny. She said she's not only there to be with friends, but to also explore and to work on a writing project. <laughs> work on a writing project. That's code for I'm unemployed and going to start a blog. <laughs> writing project. <sighs> writing in her journal every night. My passion is to write and sing original songs. In The Talking Head, Olivia says that Ethan believes that children come out blank, come out a blank slate, and you have to indoctrinate them. Indoctrinate is rough. She's, okay, let's go on. <laughs> she says, and you have to make sure that they believe everything that you believe. If you make a different choice as an adult, you have failed as a parent. If they make a different choice as an adult, you failed as, as a parent. I don't, I, okay. Olivia is still very naive. That is what all parents do. That is what parenting is. You have a child and you raise it in what you believe is right. That's good parenting. Now, one child might be raised a little different than another child because what one parent believes is right is different from what another parent believes is right. That's why we're all different here in the world, right? So her way of saying you have to indoctrinate them when they're young and make them believe what you believe. Yes, that's called good parenting. Good parenting is train a child from when they are small. Oh, that's a biblical verse, isn't it? Train a child in, is it the ways of the Lord and they will not depart from, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, the point is that my whole goal with my children was to instill in them the core values and beliefs that I have. 
I mean, unless I thought I was a shitty person, if I thought I was a shitty person, then I would probably try to like go to a how to book or something and say, how can I raise them with different ideas than what I have in my head because I know I'm all messed up. I, I don't think that's the majority of people out there. So it's not a negative thing to raise the children in how you believe. She's, she's really misguided in all of this. If she's not going, to, if she thinks that they're a blank slate and you shouldn't incorporate any of your cores or val values or beliefs on them at all when they're young, who am I? And world peace. What will those children turn out to be like when they are in their 20s? By the time children hit their teenage years, they're already testing boundaries. They're already starting to read on and research and, and figure out what do I really believe in all of this and what is right and what is not right. By the time they're in their 20s, sometimes they go astray, sometimes they come back. Look at Mariah. The whole point with Mariah is the whole concept of put basic core values in them and no matter where they go or what they do or what choices they make, they'll still have that core goodness inside of them. That's a good thing. But Olivia is opposed to all of that. She's just this free will, do whatever you want to do, raise, let the kids make their own choices, I guess. I mean, listen, I have a degree in education, Olivia. Check back with me after you have a kid 16 years later and we'll discuss how that's going. And at that point, it's too late. You don't want that. She doesn't want to have values or beliefs. You know what? Have you ever heard Olivia of the statement, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. There you go. Hey everybody, we are halfway through this episode and I wanna thank you for sticking it out this far. I hope you enjoy the rest of it because really the second half of this show is the best part of this episode. So thanks again. And if you haven't subscribed yet, liked or commented, please do so now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And shockingly, she says this, because I, I feel like there's such an easy solution. It just takes a little more work. Can you expand on that, Olivia? What is the easy solution here? I'm not seeing a whole a real easy solution because Ethan has been who he's always been and he said he's not going to change. You have changed significantly and you said you're not going to go back. This leads to stalemate. I don't. I don't see an easy, I, I find it hard to find a solution at all, quite frankly, at this point, but an easy one, hmm. I feel like there's such an easy solution. It just takes a little more work. On whose part? On both your part? I don't know. This would be nice if there was some embellishment here, or maybe if the TLC producers, when they were doing this talking head interview, would have probed her for more information that she could have shared. That would have been nice. Don't know really what she's getting at there. She says that part of her wishes that Ethan would just say, let's get divorced, but he won't say it, that he's putting it on her and making her say it. No, he's not where you are, Olivia. He's, he's not trying to make you say it. He wants to reconcile. He wants you to change your mind on those core values and beliefs that you have changed. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't think he's eager for you to say, let's get divorced. I don't. He's still in love. Um, here is a classic Olivia comment. And I feel like I didn't make this choice. He did. So he should be the one to say it. Olivia rewriting history. None of that's true. She said, I didn't make this choice. Did she really say that? Maybe TLC can supply her with some of the raw tape and they can play back. We cut back to Los Angeles where Barry and Ethan are still sitting on that couch and they're talking. And Ethan said that Olivia has said that um, Barry and Kim don't want her around or wish that um, they would, she would no longer be together with Ethan. Something to that effect. Barry doesn't skip a beat. He immediately denies that. And he has a very good point. He said the concept of divorce is a very painful thing and I don't wish it on anyone. 
So now Ethan is very happy to hear this and he is eager to get back to Minnesota and share this information with Olivia because I guess Olivia had him convinced that Barry doesn't want the two of them married at all together or coming around. Barry did make a comment to the effect of, we do have to have a conversation because Olivia has done some hurtful things and I think they want to talk through and work through it. But I mean, Barry doesn't hurt a fly. Obviously it's not going to be confrontational. So, but it's never going to happen. Olivia is never going to get to that point because she's already had in her head convinced that Ethan's family all hates her. And she has burned a lot of bridges with the siblings, I will say. Oh, later on, we have Micah, Micah asking Ethan his thoughts on Mariah. And then Micah says to Ethan, have you spoken to Olivia? Ethan says, I texted her yesterday because I took a picture of the moon and I said that it was really nice and it reminded me of her. But that was the day before and there's been no response. So Ethan's not the only one who's really poor communication. There's no amount of superficial compatible traits that can make up for even one absolute fundamental disagreement, especially when it comes down to raising kids. Yes, Ethan. Yes. Okay. You're getting it. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. That's the most insightful thing he's ever said. Ethan admits he hasn't talked to Mariah since the road trip. Uh, I think we saw that last episode when he talked to her on the phone and he really just kind of cut her off and dismissed her and said, okay, well, I don't think we accomplished anything. Goodbye. As she was saying, I love you and I miss you. And that was a really tough, tough one to watch, which by the way, if you go back and watch that and it seems really edited, I had a bunch of videos. They didn't get copyright strikes, but they got a copyright notice put on them. So I'm going in through a different editor that they have after you get a copyright uh, notice and trying to edit down more stuff to make the clips a lot shorter. And um, so it's just gonna look like I'm a really poor editor. <laughs> you really suck at this. So if all of a sudden you see a clip and then I'm commenting on it and it's not exactly what you saw, I may have had to cut out part of what my commentary was. It's unfortunate but I'm just trying to get all these copyright marks or I don't remember what they call them. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, but I want to get the clips short enough that there's no copyright problems on them at all. Okay. So I, I'm pretty sure this is one of those scenes that I pretty much cut off that in the car, the conversation with Mariah, I had the whole conversation on there. Not that it, it was that long, but I think it has to be closer to like 15 seconds of video and I had about a minute's worth of video so I had to keep chopping things down. I'll be better in the future. Really? You promise? I promise. So Ethan refers to this conversation with her in the car as the icebreaker conversation. The icebreaker. Mm, okay. I wouldn't call it that. She basically was almost groveling and you were like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll talk to you later. You gave her nothing back, nothing. You accepted her apology at one point. And then you just said, okay, I'll talk to you later and left, got out of the truck. So I don't know who was breaking the ice there. Obviously, I guess Mariah was trying to cause she made the phone call and reached out, but hmm. Maybe for Ethan, this is an icebreaker. Ethan finds out that Mariah is coming. He says he's a little irritated about it because he wanted to get away from all her problems and she's one of the problems. <sighs> Standard Ethan. Mariah said that knowing that Ethan was gonna be there and that she reached out and she was gonna go hang out with Micah, she started sending texts to Ethan to let her know that she was gonna be coming. And even when she got into California, she said, I just want you to know I'm here, I'm in California now. She said her text said, I love you. He didn't respond to any of them, no surprise. And he points out that he has not spoken to Mariah in person in over nine months. It was before he left for Europe. And I'm still so confused about the whole Europe thing, but we'll get into that. Ethan said, it feels weird to laugh and carry on like nothing's wrong because everything is wrong. 
Well, it's because you're not communicating, Ethan. It doesn't have to all be wrong. Mariah reached out. She tried. You cut her off and then you didn't respond to her again. I, what do you want? It's going to continue to be wrong unless you fix it. I definitely miss Ethan. It's good to see him again. I definitely, um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just like, I don't even feel like he really missed me, but that's my own feelings. Oh, it breaks my heart to hear Mariah say, I don't feel like he missed me. Oh, that was hard to hear, wasn't it? I think deep down inside that's not true. I think he did miss her. I think he just does not have the tools to understand how to fix problems. Well, and then he's got Olivia over here in his ear, basically not wanting him to fix it because she doesn't want to hang out with any of his siblings. So, I mean, Ethan is in a bad place, I guess. It, it, it's the perfect storm, right? He's such a poor communicator. And then he's got Olivia also telling him, don't communicate with them. But as they first see each other, Mariah is trying so hard to make this work. She's asking him about his cars. She said she heard he got a new car. She heard that he moved his other cars up to Minnesota. She says she's still driving her Mustang. I still have my Mustang. And it still drives just fine. Zip. Zero response from Ethan. He stares off like he has a lobotomy. Zero affect on his face, not making eye contact. Like, hello, is anybody home? It's very frustrating to watch. Very. Mariah is handling it with grace. I would have been like, hello, I'm over here. Not over there next to that wall where there's nobody standing. Like, he's just... Mm. Mariah goes on to thank him for all that he taught her about cars as he worked on her cars and he was she was watching him and he was kind of teaching her. She said that she's learned a lot and now that she's living on her own, she was able to do a couple things to her car herself and so that was because of Ethan. Nothing. He moved his head a fraction of a centimeter. Because I've been able to do a few things to my car by myself, which was nice. Honestly, I'm just, I start to feel for Ethan and get where he's coming from. And then he does something like this. I don't know. Mariah's interpretation of how he's behaving is, she said, Ethan is quite, Ethan is quiet and stern and he doesn't look happy. And I don't know if I belong here right now. If I'm making him uncomfortable, I should go. She's much more introspective than he is. I mean, and much more tender-hearted. She's out there and she sees all her brothers and her dad, but she's willing to pick up and leave if Ethan is uncomfortable. And yet, there's, there's nothing more Mariah can do. She's apologized. I don't know. And Ethan, to his credit, says, Mariah, I think that we need to talk. And so they go to talk outside that was really cute mariah's like just you and me and dad <laughs> she's like pointing to her dad right next to her like i mean he's coming too right <laughs> i don't think i think she knows that things won't go left if dad is there and so she's trying to prevent that from happening by having a, a third party over here what was going down but ethan said no he wanted to talk just to mariah so she says okay <laughs> And off they go outside to have a conversation. I love the cut to Barry and his reaction to this. Uh, as you asked you if he wanted to go talk, it's because I haven't seen you since before we went to Europe and a lot of stuff has changed. I'm looking at it going, it could go either way. Ethan said in his talking head that he had two things he wanted to get clear from Mariah. Two things he wanted to know. One was why did she leave the house in Tampa that they were in together um, and didn't tell him while he was in Europe. And two, 
why she accused Olivia of stealing her music. I think we kind of know the answers to those questions already, but we don't really have the deets on the whole situation with the finances and the rent and when she was supposed to leave or not supposed to leave. I could never really understand why Ethan was surprised if there was a month, just a month left on the lease unless she didn't pay for that month, which would put her wrong. But nobody really ever came out and said that. Ethan did imply that she owed money. Like apparently he Venmoed her or something and said, you owe more money. But then she said she wasn't going to pay the money, but then she was caught up on the rent. It was very confusing to me. There's a little bit more clarification in this episode. In terms of stealing the music, I thought that was pretty clear in the phone conversation that she apologized, that she overreacted. She couldn't see the music. She didn't know where it was. She didn't have access to it. She thought Olivia stole it and she was reactionary. And so she was sorry for that. And she shouldn't have done that. What else do you want to know? So it'll be interesting when we get to that part because we didn't get there in this episode as to, he didn't ask her that question yet. I found something very interesting that Mariah said. Mariah's explanation to why she left before they got back from Europe. She's like, well, I had, you know, basically she didn't add this, but things had gone down. There were issues with Olivia posting stuff on social media about Kim and the whole family, all the kids were very offended by it all. And they find it all to not be true. I think I talked about that in the last video too. So there was a lot of hurt there. And I think she didn't want to see Olivia because of that. So that's why she left. Now, how the timeline of her leaving and not getting access to her music, if that was before or after, that I don't know. But I think it was the Kim situation that prompted her to pick up and leave and say, I don't want to see Olivia because I don't trust her. I don't like her. I'm going to move on. So Olivia says, by the time I plan to move, I had been tasked texting you multiple times about other things and I was ignored oh well I mean you still could have mentioned it Mariah you still could have mentioned it but she has a leg to stand on here apparently she was texting about other stuff and Ethan was ignoring her text so what makes her believe that when she says oh by the way I'm leaving didn't need a response it wasn't a question so I can see both sides I can see both sides. And at the end of the episode, we finally get the answer about the timeline regarding her moving out and the money that she owes to Ethan slash Olivia for rent. She moved out with 20 days left on her lease in that month, but she paid for the full month. She moved out early. She let Olivia's brother have his own pad for a while there. So all of that is fine. So she was right. She was completely paid up. In the interview, Ethan said, it was my understanding that she was going to stay through September, that we were all going to stay through September. But I didn't have that in writing. So now I've learned you have to get it in writing, even if it's family. Uh, yeah. Why would he think they were staying till September, but only give her a lease that ended... At I don't know when. I think there was like a month or two left. Maybe I think it was only like a month left. So this may have been the end of August that she left. And then there was still the month of September. And apparently verbally they talked about her staying there. But, you know, it's not contractual. So Ethan's learning as he's growing up. Listen, Ethan, we all get burned in life. We've all trusted somebody. It's not the end of the world, but... Take from it what you can and learn. And it seems like he did. He did. He's like, okay, I'm going to move on. Because in the end, she's right. And I just thought we had this verbal agreement, but it's not, it's not going to hold up in court. So move on. Chairs dismissed. I still would love the answer to the question of why didn't he make the lease go through September? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so... While Ethan and Olivia were in Europe, Olivia did this whole post thing about Kim. I guess based on this next information, we can assume the timeline is that she put out the post about Kim, Mariah gets offended, Mariah moves out of the apartment because her lease is up anyway, and then Mariah also posted 
something negative about Olivia, which I believe was the whole, she's stealing my music because Mariah didn't have access to it at that point. Ethan said, I don't understand when we were in Europe, why you had to throw Olivia under the bus. Of course, Mariah doesn't come back with the best question, which should have been in response to your wife throwing our mother under the bus, but okay. So I wrote out the response that Mariah said. Way too long for me to cut and splice in here. So I'm going to read it to you because I think it's eloquent because I do so many <laughs> sister wives reviews and the way Robin, but especially Cody speak is so chopped up and fragmented and all over the place and so difficult to understand that it was so refreshing to have complete coherent sentences. And there literally was only one pronoun mix up in there, like one grammar thing out of this entire page of a response that she gave. And I was like, I'm just sitting here writing it going, this is amazing. This is so well said that she memorizes ahead of time. I'm just so used to people analyzing people and talking about it on this channel about people who are are idiots when it comes to speaking that this was refreshing. Olivia said, I guess you could call it throwing her under the bus or whatever, but I hated myself for a long time for not speaking up and saying something a long time ago. And I was honestly scared because I knew that this would be the outcome. I probably wouldn't have a good relationship with you and no relationship with Olivia at all. And I did love her and she and I were close. So it's just like I was sacrificing really who I was. And even my own family, I was like, why am I doing this to my own family? I love them dearly. And I'm not trading anything in the world for that. And then she says, and the same for you. Now, I don't know what and the same for you refers to. I don't know if she's trying to say, I wouldn't trade in anything for my relationship with you, if that's what she means. But like he is part of her family. The other possibility might be that she's saying, you shouldn't have to compromise and throw your family away either, which is a little bit more confrontational than the first one. The first one comes from more loving. The other one's more, um, this is what I think is right. And I think that it would be right for you as well. So we heard this whole explanation about how she lost herself, how she was just kind of like flying with the wind and basically doing what Olivia was doing. And in the meantime, she was cutting off her family. She was making poor choices, et cetera, et cetera. Basically everything she's saying here and then how she started to hate herself. But then for a long time, she just continued to hate herself and go with it because she knew that if she confronted Olivia about it, that it would end as it is right now. And that would be that the two of them wouldn't be talking anymore. And that it, you know, probably would mean that her and Ethan wouldn't be talking and she didn't want that. So she found herself caught in a very bad situation. But the at the end of all of that, this is what Ethan's response was. I'm a little confused because where does Olivia fall into that? Where does Olivia fall into all that? It's all about Olivia. I don't, I don't. Maybe he's a little thick in the head, a little slow. Needs things put in black and white. If Olivia's name wasn't inserted there in each one of the sentences, he didn't get that we were talking about Olivia, which is probably good for Mariah because when she plays the song for him, he's not going to get that any of it has to do with Olivia. He's just going to think it's a nice song. <laughs> and then Mariah's response. Um, I think we all know. And that's the end of the episode. It got good at the end, and I'm really looking forward to the next episode. I really want to hear his response to her doing a pretty good job of putting into words what she's feeling. I'm honestly hopeful, but because he's still caught up in the Olivia world, I don't think until he breaks away from her, 
he's ever going to truly be able to see anyone else's point of view. All right, that was a good episode. Thank you for hanging out and staying to the very end. I appreciate you. We'll see you again next week.